If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. Have Garrett Armfield joining the program right now. He will be back in action next Friday night, September 6th at Shamrock FC 322. He'll take on Ernst Wells on Fight TV, and the action will take place at River City Casino in St. Louis, Missouri. Golden Gloves is here. How are you, man? Yes, sir. Doing great. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. I know you are in in Florida right now. You're trading yeah. with Hard Knocks 365, and for those, I'm sure everyone has the weather app on their phone. There's a hurricane that's about to yeah. come through Florida, and you're kind of down there right now. So, how does that change things for you heading into this fight? Yeah, uh, just like a, it's only been a, a few minor changes. Like for one, I'm just leaving on my flight early to get back to St. Louis, um, and then another thing is I'm starting to water load, which means I have to be drinking two gallons of water today. And so trying to run out and find water throughout South Florida is like a little hectic right now. So um, I found some gallons. They had like two in the back stock room. And so I was looking up to snag those. So we're good on the water load. But I mean, other than that, camp's going great. I feel better than ever and ready to perform. I know you're from Springfield, Missouri, and you've trained with Springfield Fight Club and, and a lot of other places. When did you move to Florida? When did you make that change? So I've kind of thought about it for the past year. Uh, since last summer that I was wanting to move because I was I knew I was graduating college the upcoming year and so I actually moved down here about 10 weeks ago um, so I'm fresh new down in South Florida um, I lived in Springfield for about three years but I'm originally from St. Louis Missouri where I grew up at did you grow up I know Shamrock FC has been around for for quite some time now did you yeah did, did you as you were a kid as you were getting into combat sports did you attend any Shamrock FC events were they on your radar at all yeah, actually, the first Shamrock FC event I attended was Dan O'Connor's uh, main event fight. And this was back when I was still in high school, so probably five, six years ago. Um, so I have attended Shamrock before, but this is actually the first time I've competed for them. Uh, growing up in St. Louis, I mostly just did boxing matches. I had one MMA fight for Rumble Time, which is no longer operating. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be my first fight for Shamrock. I'm excited. They always have great production, and they always put on a stellar show. And so I'm excited to be a part of it. I know you came from a boxing background. The, the Golden Gloves nickname isn't just a coincidence. You are a former Golden Gloves champion yourself. How did that transition from boxing to MMA come to be? And I, I love these stories. I love how people get yeah. into the sport. How did that all uh, happen for you? So I started with karate, and I also I picked up boxing after karate. So I always had like the kick and like the the different distance and timing that comes with the karate um so you know that kind of helps with the mma because a lot of times boxers will stand there and they get taken down because they punch in with their hips and they get their hips taken out from under them um so karate kind of taught me a way to bounce back and forth and keep the distance use footwork and it mixes well with my boxing so i can jump in i'll throw a combo i'll duck and i'll be out back into my distance and back into my range um so far within MMA, you know, my boxing has definitely been my strength and it's definitely been shown to be an effective and my previous fights. Competing in, in different karate tournaments, competing in boxing matches and, and for golden gloves. Was it a different feeling getting that first MMA fight than those others? Or were you just comfortable having, having, having had to compete in those other combat sports? Was, was the transition easy for you when it came to actually getting into the cage and fighting? Yeah, so um, the only one fight that I was like a nervous jerk was my first amateur MMA fight. You know, I kind of just blacked out and started swinging. <laughs> kind of like what happens with everybody's first MMA fight, right? Uh, but no, what I've kind of realized is that like the more, I guess, tools that are offered me within the cage, the more comfortable I feel. So like, for example, say it was a kickboxing match or just a wrestling match, I would be more nervous. But the fact that there's the striking and the wrestling and you have to deal with all the weapons that I've been building on down here in South Florida it makes me extremely confident every time I step in the cage. Like I love walking in there with just the small gloves on mouthpiece and a cup, you know, I love being to go in there and it's just like a raw intensity feeling that anything goes except, you know, obviously eye gouging and all that stuff. But, um, I like it. I've never felt more comfortable inside the cage. It feels like home. I don't know. I find uh, peace within the chaos. Oh, I like that. 
piece yeah. of in the chaos. So you made your amateur debut, like you said, in uh, May of 2015. You got a first round finish, swinging wildly. It was your first hey, amateur fight. Hey, you get it yeah. done. And you won your first six fights as an amateur. You lost your last fight as an amateur. But I, I always find this fascinating because, you know, some amateur fighters, they'll they'll finish a couple of fights and they feel, you know what, I'm ready to go pro. I'm ready to do this. Was yeah. was you being in college? Was you had just having all those all those other things going on in your life? Was that the, the sort of catalyst for waiting a little longer to turn pro? Or did you just feel like you, you had some other work to do? You needed to gain that experience before you made that decision? It was definitely an experience thing. You know, uh, a lot of guys, they want to be at the top as quick as possible. But I'm sorry, the average age of a UFC ranked fighter is 28 years old. This, this game, it's a long-term plan. It's a long-term game. My coaches, they wanted me to have 10 amateur fights before I went professional. Um, the reason I got to turn professional a little earlier is because I fought for my last amateur fight. I fought the toughest guy a weight class up, and we couldn't really find anybody else for me to fight down at 135 within the Missouri region or Midwest region. And so it's definitely been a waiting game and just build and build and build and make sure that my holes get as small as they can get and I can be able to improve myself every single day. And so every time I step in the cage, it's like I want to be a step up from the competition I'm facing, right? So it was like my last amateur fight, a lot of these guys that had seven, eight amateur fights are already turning pro. I'm still amateur because I'm still growing and it's going to catch up to them in the pros and the pro ranks whenever I have more experience and I'm be able to prove my skill set to them. How much an advantage do you think that is for you to, to have that knowledge? Because a lot of fighters don't have that mentality, especially at, at 22 years old or 21 years old when you made that decision. You know, how important is that to, to have good people around you to, to lead you in the right path and just have that mentality yourself going through the amateur ranks to not rush yourself too quick to, to get to that next level? It's all about support system, honestly. Like, you have your team behind you. You have your homies behind you. You know, when you go into the cage, it's not me versus you. It's my team versus your team, right? So when you have the support system around you that everybody tells you, take it slow. Don't be in a rush. You have your, you have the next 10 years to be a professional fighter. Take these next few couple years, develop and develop every single part of your game. Because when that time comes, you're going to be over there and you're going to be answering that door. As a pro, you won your first two fights. You spent less than four minutes in the cage within those two fights, got two first-round finishes. And then in your last fight in May, you fought Ronnie Lawrence at LFA 67, and you suffered your first professional loss. Talk about what you took away from that fight, the learning lessons that you can take moving forward into this next fight and beyond. Yeah, that loss humbled me a ton. You know, whenever I was getting ready for that fight, I was 2-0, and and my opponent was 4-1, and one, and the fact that he had a loss on his record made me feel that I was the better fighter already without even studying and re-watching all of his tapes and like really learning about him. I felt like that I had the edge just because that one loss. And so what I realized is that everybody loses in this sport and that this sport is, again, this sport has so many different levels. Just because you've lost once doesn't mean anything. And so it humbled me completely. You know, my first two fights, I went out there and I was able to get a quick finish in both of them. And so whenever the fight came around and the first round came and went, I was like, okay, so this is a real professional fight now. Like I'm in a scrap. I'm in this for 10 more minutes. Like, I'm not going to be able to get out of here with a three-minute knockout. So what I've learned is, uh, one, always try to pick up information from your training partners, especially down here in South Florida when you got a room full of UFC guys, guys full of Bellator, 1FC. Everybody has their own style and their own uniqueness, which I try to incorporate into my game in any way, shape, or form. And so I guess what the loss has taught me is to just learn, learn, and learn, and make sure that loss doesn't happen again. You know, you you can get away with one loss, but as soon as the losses goes to two losses, three losses, that's when your career tra- trajectory goes down. So I study, I do all the things that I did wrong in that fight. I got them fixed, and I'm looking forward to be able to showcase my skills and what I fixed in my last fight in this next fight against Ernest Wells at Shamrock 322. What have you learned about Ernest Wells? throughout this process, getting ready for this fight? What kinds of things does he bring to the table that you need to be ready for? What kinds of things do you have in your toolbox that can thwart what he's going to be able to bring to that fight on Friday night, next Friday night? So he's explosive and he's got good wrestling. And that's mostly what I've picked up from his fights. Uh, I haven't been able to find too many of them online, unfortunately. But it's what I know that my strengths are going to be that I am able to read the timing and the distance well. 
And so he's going to be able to explode, but as soon as he jumps in, he's either going to be hit with counter shots or he's going to be missing and whiffing, and then I'm going to be countering back. And then also another thing I've been working on again is just jujitsu every single day, trying to be the best jujitsu fighter I can be as well. Because say the fight does go to the ground, no matter how it goes to the ground, I'm going to be there already setting up my submissions to be able to get the finish. Is that you? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, my sister's I, calling me. Yeah. It's all good. She must. They're calling you. They're calling you. Now you're all froze, right. Now you froze up on me, but it's all good. Uh, Obviously, there's no shortage of training partners at Hard Knocks 365. Like you said, there's just a room full of killers, UFC guys, Bellator guys, guys with tons of experience, yeah. guys who have been there in so many ways. Who are some of the fighters, who are some of the people you're working with specifically to get you ready for this one? Uh, so fellow Shamrock FC fighter Dustin Lampros, he helped me with my camp. Um, Kenny Porter II, um, you know, Saul Rogers, who's Ultimate 22 or Ultimate Fighter 22 winner, he helped me a lot with my striking. I mean... Since it's my first camp down there, I haven't had, you know, really been taken under the wing yet because I've only been down here 10 weeks. Um, but it's been little things I've been picking up from every single person and guys that have been kind of helping me like, oh, hey, keep your elbows tighter. Oh, hey, move this way instead of that way, you know, dodge instead of duck. And so it's, there's been no sole focus. But as I build relationships and build friendships with these other guys down here at South Florida, that's definitely going to be something I'm looking forward to. But for right now, I've just been keeping my head down and training as hard as I can. I know growing up in the St. Louis area, this is a pretty cool thing to be able to fight in St. Louis and have a lot of people there. Do you have a, a ton of people that are going to be coming out, friends, family, you know, old classmates, things like that, they are going to be coming to this event next Friday night? Oh, yeah, of course. I've hit up so many people like, hey, I'm <laughs> fighting for the first time in St. Louis since I was 18 years old. I haven't fought in St. Louis since my amateur debut. And so it's like, hey, I'm coming back, I'm making my return, I'm excited to put on a show in front of my friends, my family, um, you know, because it's, you know, from my point of view, it's, even though it's like my fight, it's not just about me, it's about everybody that's helped me along the way. And so I'm putting on a show for them, and I want to be able to, you know, show them that their support, it really does make a difference when I step in the cage, you know, it does make a difference, completely. I how do you see this all playing out next Friday night at Shamrock FC 322? You versus Ernest Wells, Fight TV. A lot of people are going to be watching. You're fighting back at home. How do you see this all going down? So I'm ready to go all three rounds. I'm going to go all 15 minutes, but I'm known as a finisher. I've had, uh, let's see, 10 total fights. And out of the eight total wins, I have seven first-round finishes. And so I always go out there, and I always put it to them because people want to see a fight. I'm ready to bring a fight, you know? I love scrapping. I love throwing down. You don't want to look past Friday, obviously next Friday night. Obviously, there's there's a big fight ahead of you. You're fighting a very explosive guy. You know what what kinds of goals have you set for yourself for the rest of the year? Do you want to get at least one more in, maybe two more? I know you're a pretty active guy when it comes to competition. Do you want to try to get one or two more in before the end of the year after this one? Yes, completely. I would definitely want to get at least one more in by the end of the year, and then I want to have as many as I can next year. I want to be able to set myself in the position for when that door opens and that call is ready, that I'm ready training-wise, skill-wise, record-wise to make the jump to the major promotions. But until then, I'm just going to keep training and take as many fights, take smart fights, and get those first-round finishes like I always look for. What's the ultimate goal with this? Is it just getting to the UFC? Is it becoming a world champion? Is it not even just getting to the UFC, just getting to the highest level possible. Like what kinds of, when you got into the sport, what was, what was the mindset? What was the goal? You know, what's the, not finish line, but what's sort of the, the brass ring, so to speak for you? Uh, it's definitely to be a world champion, but more than just to be a world champion is just to be known as like a decent fighter, like a decent human being overall. Uh, you know, cause you will have world champions, but a lot of times they're just cause a world champion doesn't mean they're a good person. It's rare to find somebody that's a world champion, and a good person that's involved with the community. And I want to be able to build my brand, build the Garrett Armfield brand as a community-involved person that trains his butt off, and he wants to inspire and motivate those younger than me, those around me, those that are looking to get into mixed martial arts. I want to be that person they look up to because whenever I was younger and whenever I was coming through the ranks, uh, especially the amateur ranks, I'm still going through the ranks, obviously, I look up to these guys uh, every single day. You know, When I walk into the gym, they're there training, so it makes me want to train hard. And I want to be that I want to be that guy for that young, broke, 22-year-old that just moved down from Midwest Missouri down to South Florida. 
I like it, man. 22-year-old Garrett Armfield back yes, in action. Sir. Next Friday night, September 6th, Shamrock FC 322 against Ernest Wells. You can watch all the action on Fight TV. Garrett, before we let you go, man, I appreciate the time. Let the yeah, folks thank know. you so much. Yeah, man. Let the folks know where they can follow along on this journey with you via social media. Any shout-outs, anything else you want to get off your chest? The floor is yours, man. Yeah, of course. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's all MMA, Golden Gloves. Um, you can find me there. I'm constantly posting, showing like the ins and outs of my training camp. You know, then thank you for to my management, Iridium Sports Agency. Thank you to all my sponsors. Thank you to my family, my friends, and my training partners. And I'm excited for next Friday night, ready to throw down. All the best to you, man. Get out of Florida. Get away I from know. that I'm storm. Good, I'm <laughs> we'll see you next Friday in the cage. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, man.